How's everybody doing out there? This is The Awakening. I want to get into this message quickly. Animals aren't evil. People are. I said it again. Animals aren't evil. People are. Animals are not evil. God gets in them and controls them. God gives them a base nature. They follow it out. That's what animals do. They don't have free will. They don't have a capacity of intellect. That's the same way as human beings do. Animals are literally placed here for to be subject unto us. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. And we can't call them evil for doing what God designed them to do. Human beings, on the other hand, deviate constantly from what God's design was for us. I'm an animal lover and I pay a lot of attention to animals. If you really do observe them, you'll see that animals go about their routine on a daily basis. They fulfill, they don't go against their nature. They fulfill all of the things that are within their nature. Look at bees. Bees, they they pollen bees do a lot to help the earth even though they're so small they pollinate the earth they work for they're in there working for the queen a lot of them sacrifice themselves they have but they do that constantly in a cycle it is a cycle of the same actions they don't have jealousy within the the animal kingdom at least not what any jealousy that we understand you know territorial maybe but that's something else that's in their nature but they don't have the ability they're not going behind another chimp is not going behind another chimp's back talking about them talking behind their back causing um unneeded turmoil and conflicts Animals like pigs, what they they have a nature. They're gonna return to the slop that they come. They, you have snakes. Snakes. They're gonna if you get too close, they're gonna rear their fangs. They may bite you. Scorpions. Scorpions. They're they have they're aggressive. They have a mechanism to sting. But because a scorpion stings you does not make it inherently evil. You know, this is its nature. This is what God has designed it to do. And God, even if you look at it, like animals, the thing with animals is that they're subject unto human beings. They have no free will of choice of lifestyle or anything like they are designed a certain way and they carry out that design into their death. So there are no evil animals and God himself. What happens when animals commit evil acts, there is a spirit that enters them. I can prove this to you. The Bible tells you, you can, we can look in many instances in the Bible where God has used animals to carry out his will, his bidding. God has put a spirit, his spirit can enter into an animal and make them talk. A spirit can come into an animal and make them, make you hear what that, and make you hear something from them. I can prove that to you as well as in the Bible. But before I go to these verses, what I'm saying is animals cannot be evil. Animals are here for us to be subject unto us and to carry out God's will. 
and the will that he have for the earth. These animals, they have a hand in it. They keep some animals, like I said, with um ants, bugs, all the way down to bugs, bees, bu like certain birds. These things keep, they keep the ecosystem moving in harmony and they keep the ecosystem from going awry. And this is what it says in the book of Genesis chapter 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the livestock and all the earth and all and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God has ordained man to have dominion over the animals. Man is supposed to, we respect, we're supposed to have a respect for animals as well as creatures that God created and ones that we are over. And that's why you have people who have forms and, and sheep herders, like, you know, they, they treat that very seriously. Like people who are on farms raising chickens or, or anything like that, they treat it very seriously. Even people who own dogs and cats and some people take it too far and they treat those dogs and cats like people, you know. But though they aren't people, you know, I'm not saying that animals, that they can't feel anything like pain or or things like that. I mean, but at the end of the day, that they are ordained to do a certain function. So who knows what, you know, what the, what, who knows like what animals, like I can't, that's just an impossibility for me to like project into their, their minds or, you know, because, because for all we know, those receptors are cut off. Like certain receptors, like for bovine animals, like if you just look at cows or, or anything, like they're just there. Like it's like they all under one spirit. Like it's like they all share the same spirit. It could be, a, a, it could be five, six different cows, but they would all, but they all share the same spirit just to, to graze, eat, poop, you know, do the, the simple mechanisms that God has ordained them to do. Animals are here, certain animals are here to be food for us, to be meat for us. So that's why God gives you gives us the parameters of which animals there is to eat and which ones not to eat. Like some people, you got to look at it like you look at a, a rabbit or something like that. Who or cat? Who grabs a cat and and thinks to cook it? Like who who does that? Who gets a dog? You know who has different traits? Different animals have different traits that God has and roles that God has built them to fulfill. Who's gonna have a a dog? Who you know you see the type of intelligence and things that it that it shows. Who's going to to grab him up and, and toss him in a pot like though you can do these things it doesn't like certain things just you know just don't even feel right certain things you know this so god has never that's because dogs are not and cats are not on the list of things that god has ordained for us to eat but we don't want to listen to the lord you know you have and you will have people who have these new age mindsets that I'm thankful to God that I don't have the priv that I don't have the um, privilege of <laughs> adopting or I, and, I, and I'm using privilege sarcastically. I don't I'm thankful to God that I don't have the mindset to be swayed by this by these new age. Um, these new age thinkers who want to try to all oh, they always on every wave of of indoctrination like i said college does that to a lot of people as well but you will have people who think 
that is something that killing animals for our consumption is somehow wrong. Yet in nature, this is what happens all throughout it. Nature, you have animals. It's insects killing other insects for food, animals killing other animals for food. And we as human beings, we know that God, the living God, the God of the Bible has ordained things to be that way. God has ordained for us to be able to eat certain animals to hunt, kill, and eat certain animals. You have people who are being who are vegans, and you know they try to have they try to have a fake sense of a moral reason why they're not eating meat or something like that. Then which doesn't make sense because if you're a vegan, what are you now eating? You eating plants? Aren't they technically alive? Do they feel pain? Like so, we could go down rabbit holes with you know illogic but what only matters to me is thus saith the lord and any anything else outside of that that's up for you know for people to be talking to they blue in the face i don't worry about that i only worry about thus saith the lord this is the covenant that god made with noah and this is in the book of Genesis chapter 9. It says, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of, of the fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth, all the birds of the air, and upon every creature that moves along the ground, and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands everything that lives and moves will be food for you just as i gave you green the green plants i now give you everything but you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it and for your lifeblood i will surely demand an accounting i will demand an accounting from every animal and from each man too I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed. For he, for in the image of God, has God made man. God gave us dominion over everything on the earth and under the sun to see fit and to deal with how we see fit. Now, God also tells you in further chapters to respect animals. These, the ones that till the land, even the ones that we use for meat. That doesn't mean we don't respect those animals. They make a sacrifice to continue the cycle of life. This is the way God has ordained things. Why do you think God was demanding animal sacrifice? Why was God demanding that? Even the Bible says that when they burnt the animal sacrifice, that was a sweet aroma to God. God smelled those roast meats. Have you ever smelled freshly cooked steak? Yeah, uh-huh. You get hungry. You start feeling like that's natural for you. It smells good, don't it? You know, God is not unaware of these things. But again we should have a respect for animals and there are certain animals that you should never use for meat to eat them who wants looks at a bunny rabbit and decides that's something i want to eat who looks at a um look at all of these crazy looking animals who look at a bat and be like that's something that i oh man i want to eat that people eat who look at an alligator and then say that's something I want to eat, but people eat those. But see, God is that's not something that God gave parameters to eat. Though people can you could do and consume whatever you want, but God didn't give you those parameters to eat that. Who got go around eating uh worms or you know eating snakes? Come on, man. Are you 
Come on, you like that don't even make sense. People eating these puffer fish, them fish that could be poisonous to you, you know, if uh if you cook it wrong. People out like here paying high dollar for lobsters and stuff, which is nothing but sea roaches. They, they filthy too. But animals aren't evil themselves. You don't see animals committing evil acts without unless there is a spirit behind it. I can give you an example. The example of the pigs that Jesus that in the when Jesus was in the the cemetery with the man who was possessed, and Jesus taught he was taking those demons out of the man, and the demon spoke and said, "We are legion." And they asked Jesus Christ not to put us, not to send us back to hell. Don't send us into the hell before it. We want to be a, we want to operate here on earth. We want to operate on the earth. Jesus Christ, what did he do? He put their spirits into pigs. So it's like they had, a, the pigs were an empty vessel. He put the spirit into them, the spirit of those demons. And the pigs went crazy and ran into the, into the water and drown themselves. There was a spirit that came over a bear, a she bear. I think that's what they say she was. There was a spirit that came upon that bear that caused it to go about and kill these children who were mocking the prophets of God, who were mocking, who was mocking a prophet of God. This is what the spirit did. The spirit got into the bear. The bear itself wasn't going about thinking that I'm going to, I just love to kill kids <laughs> or this is just, this is a choice that I've made. No, no, no. There was no choice. That was the spirit of God entering in that bear. Okay. God enacts punishments through wild animals. This is in the Bible. He uses them. So animals are not inherently evil. When you see a lion chasing down a gazelle, most of the time, those lions are going after the weakest one. That's why the, the Lord says that Satan goes about like a roaring lion, looking at who he can destroy. But Satan, he compares him to Satan to that because Satan goes after Christians and people when they're at their lowest and weakest point. He'll never, Satan will never go attack uh, a high level Christian or reveal himself to a person who won't, who understands spiritual warfare and who fight against the Lord. I mean, who fights with the Lord, who got the full armor on. Satan will never do that. He'll never go reveal himself and go in a direct battle with them. No, he goes after the, but let those Christians get weak. Let them, you know, take off a piece of that armor. Stop getting in their words so much. Then he'll show up. It's like the the lion scar from Lion King, the weak lion. But all lions do this. They're not going to go up against a fully grown bison or elephant. They're not going to do that. They pick the smallest, weakest one to pick off and take out of their misery or kill. Even if, the, if they could be the younger ones. Does that make the lion evil? Absolutely not. That's his nature. So we are to respect animals. We are to observe some of them. If we look in the book of Proverbs chapter six, and this is verse six, it says, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. God's telling you, observe even the animals and get wisdom because they do what they're supposed to do. They never deviate from God's plan. Only we do. So with that being said, this is the awakening. This is the spiritual awakening. This is the new name. It's the spiritual awakening that you can find on YouTube. The spiritual awakening. Peace and blessings to the hearers and doers of the Lord's word. This is Super Solican. I'm gone.